recently I've been getting a lot of requests for showing people how to lay glitter flat. I'm using the gel collection here in my little glitter trays. So we've got Phoenix, Ariel and Hydra. And the first thing you need to do if you're pretending this was a client's nail, you're going to be setting these in acrylic. I'm using CJP Master Monomer and Crystal Glass um, Powder today and my size 10 brush. So you need to lay a thin layer of clear. That's the most important bit to start with because what you're going to do is protect that client's natural nail. So you're picking up your bead and I normally work from tip to cuticle but when I'm putting my clear layer down I do tend to work the other way around because you don't need it to be that long. So just pat and press. If it's sticking to your brush just wipe your brush. You might need to put a little bit more monomer on. So you're just laying that thin layer. And as it's such a long pop obviously I'm going to need more product. So again making sure your brush stays clean. Pressing your acrylic into place, pulling it down the nail. It's just going to protect your client's nail when you come for infills. If you were to put it straight onto the nail, that's fine. You've got a lot of filing to do and obviously you don't want all that glitter to be touching the natural nail really. Not that it's going to do any harm. But all you'll find is that it's much harder when they come back for their infill. If they're going to have a soak off, then that's fair enough. So, I've got a nice thin layer. Make sure you clear off any from underneath. Made a bit of a mess of that. Make sure there's none in your brush. It's very hot today, so it's drying quite quickly. So, we've got a thin layer. Now, what I tend to do is dip my brush in monomer, wet the top of where you're going to be working, and then I go straight into my glitter. So there's actually no um, product here other than glitter. It just gives you a bit of a base without the bulk to start with. It's not going to cover every little piece, but it just does help you move that glitter around. And then wipe your brush. Go to your next section down, your midway point, and then we're going into the aerial glitter. Move that around. Start to mix it so it all goes one into the other. Keep going in with a wet brush until you're vaguely happy with where you're placing your products. Don't worry if they're not perfect just yet, so we can finish it off in a second. And then finally, a bit more monomer on that bottom section and we'll go into Phoenix, the pink and just start moving it round if you are doing a glitter blend it's worth picking your finest one for the base so you can get really into that stiletto point and just mixing it all round the reason I do it with a wet brush is if you want to blend them up into each other at least then you're not already set them into place so much so they blend that little bit nicer okay so when you're happy with where you've placed it just make sure your sides are nice and tidy and you can go back in where you first started say at the top with the blue glitter which is Hydra you get tiny tiny wet bead of acrylic like that and then you can dip into your blue if you want and just fill in any gaps because that really will set it into place and fill in any pieces you're not happy with don't need a lot but that just gives that full coverage effect without the bulk white brush and another very wet bead just a tiny tiny bit just a tiny dip in Try not to actually get it on your gem tray because you make a mess. And just splodge it round to where you need it. Like so. And finally your pink, so a tiny wet bead. Just push it 
empty glitters. You can do it all like this if you wish, but I just find the less bulk you have, the better when you come to capping it in clear. So when you're happy, it's worth just leaving it to set just for a moment or two. If you have a client, I tend to do this one first and leave it and then go back later on when the glitter set a little bit because you're going to want to cap that in clear so that when you're filing you're not going to make a mess. So I'll risk it. I'm going to cap the whole lot in clear now. Now I'm going to go back to my usual way of doing things except I've just made a mess. Try again. I've got very old powder here, it's not doing it any good picked up a very good bead there so I'm just going to drain the liquid out of the back of my brush and then I always start at the free edge to do my strength layer so you can go reasonably thin towards the end just press it into place pressing and pulling You want it all to go matte so you can't really see the glitter because that's what's going to protect it. See that bit there is not really well covered. So go back in a bit more. I do work a little bit wetter when I'm capping but that's up to you. It's just the way I found is easiest to do it. So the strength section is towards the middle of the nail. And pressing it in. Right, your brush. Just let it settle for a minute, don't be in any hurry. CJP is self-leveling, so you can basically pop it where you need it and then drag it. Don't worry too much if you've picked up a bit of pink like I did there, we can file that out. Because it's such a big pop, I'm just going to put one more layer in that middle bit. So there. You may find you need a bigger brush. This is the size 10. I'm going to swap up to a size 12 next time I do an order. It's setting super quick because of the heat today. And then the last bit at the top. So now this is set, you can hear it tapped. I'm going to go ahead and file it into place. So I always start with the sides, some side walls. Make sure they're nice and crisp. Obviously you can't turn it round when it's a client, but you get the idea. I'm using and 100 grit files to start with. This is a slightly worn file though. You can go ahead and file your pop. Use my cap it so that you're not filing all that glitter away when you come to top coat. So this is just for argument's sake. Very smooth. Now, lots of people do it all different ways, but I'm happy with the basic shape. I always go over with um, 100 or 180 grit file, depending on how much you think needs refining. Just finally gives it a good smoothness. And quick with with that. Turn it over, put it with the 180. You can just start to see that crystal clear look coming through. 
don't pile too much so you don't pile away your glitter. And the next thing I tend to do is get some acetone on a lint free wipe and just wipe over just to check where we're at. There's a little bit too much here. So I'm just going to take my 180. Sorry, my 100 grit. 180 is on the other side. And again, quick buff just to refine the surface. And your acetone just to smooth out. That's better. That gives you that crystal clear finish. So the last thing we need to do is just pop on a top coat and cure. I always use a no wipe, I just find them easier. You can see that crystal clear, beautiful loveliness that is encapsulated glitter. So the final thing to do is remove the green pot. Give it a look, give it a good wriggle. It should snap off. And leave you with a nice display pop. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take care. See you soon. Bye.